Are you, uh, uh-oh. Yes, Mike is off. Um, yep, Jeff is muted. Hey, everyone, what's up? This is Mick Orlowski here at Camera Bits HQ with another episode of Workflow Wednesday Live. Uh, thanks for all, thanks all of you for tuning in, especially everyone working from home around the world. Uh, we know that you're starved for content, and uh, a lot of you are taking the time to learn a lot about uh, photo mechanic and optimizing your workflow and saving times. Or some of us just want to see a friendly face, which is why I, why I enjoy these very much. Uh, this week, I'd like to welcome, first of all, uh, Andrew Howard is one of our tech support gurus here at, photo, uh, here at Camera Bits, uh, who helps a lot of folks. You may have, if you've ever called in and or emailed us, you may have interacted with Andrew. He's been a, a crack problem solver for us for a, for a, a long time now. He's uh, really, really fit in well. And our very, very special Jeff guest is uh, Jeff Vogan from sportdad.ca. He's a sports photographer, and uh, he has shared some workflow tips with me, things that I never knew. Um, and he's uh, got some stuff to share. So I'm going to turn this over to Jeff and Andrew, and they're going to talk about uh, just workflow and do some demos and uh, we'll see about taking questions at, at some point uh, Dean Dean in the comments from our uh, st stream also already has chimed in with nice beard Jeff Jeff told me this is his <laughs> first ever beard so uh, Andrew and I are we, we might share some grooming tips along the way as well we're, uh, we're three bearded guys here today so I'm gonna turn it over to you guys and uh, yeah have at it oh you don't want that for me um yeah, so I mean, I'm gonna, Jeff, I think I'm gonna have you kind of just lead the way because uh, this is, we're talking about your workflow. And uh, I, you know, if I have any questions, I'm gonna certainly chime in or if I wanna get some clarification. Um, and then, uh, Nick, I don't have the comments up. So if, uh, if you, you know, if you see anything that like is relevant right then, just let me know. And um, otherwise, we can uh, answer those at the end. So, uh, I'll Jeff, uh, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Um, so I've been a full-time uh, sports photographer for four years now, and shortly after um, after I hung my shingle up, um, I got a call from Skate Canada asking me if I would uh, be the official photographer for the Canadian uh, Figure Skating Championships. So I, of wow. course, said, yeah, absolutely. Um, so four days of uh, shooting. Um, and it took me about three, a little over three weeks to sort through the images because uh, half the people were wearing black dresses and uh, it was it was just a bit of a nightmare. So working until three o'clock in the morning every night for a better part of three weeks, um, I had to figure there was a better way. So um, I started, I, I uh, got a hold of uh, Photo Mechanic um, version five at the time and started uh, tinkering with it, figuring out how I could uh, um, use the power of, of Photo Mechanic to really speed up that workflow. So the first thing I was doing was just, it was speeding up my, my culling. Um, then I started using it for cropping, but then what I really wanted to uh, automate was the organization of the files. So the file naming um, and subdirectories, and it took, um, Took a while to figure out how to do that because um, uh, the the backslash for uh, you know the file structure on a computer, the backslash was the special character. So photo until I figured that that problem out, um, I couldn't get it to work. But when I finally figured it out, I literally stood and did a dance in my uh, my office for a few minutes. So um, I'm going to step in here and uh, show a couple of examples. So I'm going to show um, a shoot that I did fairly recently. Um, so in this case, I did um, a shoot for the Cobra Swim Club. So there were a little over 200 athletes. And um, what, so what I did was I got the roster, uh, the name of the athletes ahead of time from the club. I put a number beside each one of the, uh, the names then I printed it out in alphabetical order um, and posted it or taped it to the wall. So when a kid walked up and said, you know, they stepped up to their mark, the first thing they would say was, hi, I'm number 375. And I would change the folder number, the storage folder in camera to 375 and then photograph the kid. So the camera didn't know who the kid was 
all I'm doing in camera is is uh, taking advantage of the storage folder um, functionality. In fact, until I started researching this, I, like many photographers, didn't know that a camera actually created different storage folders when you were shooting. So what I would do is a kid would walk up and say, hi, I'm, you know, in this case, uh, this is Abby. So she was folder 205. So you can see here, here's Abby. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close the, uh, the team and I'm going to open up here. These are Abby's pictures that, that we took. Um, so again, all I do is uh, in camera, change it to storage folder um, uh, 205. And then my code replacement says 205 space and her name. Um, so I insert the card into the uh, computer after the shoot and it's done. Um, so um, let me show how the ingest is done. So here's the, uh, here's kind of the, this is the part that took me forever to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, so I ingest into a folder with the name and then I take advantage of the variable folder number. So I do folder number and then equals folder number. Um, and the reason I do that is, as you can see here, I've maintained the folder number and then the name so that I can look down this list and say, okay, I've got 101, 102, 103, 104, 105 was missing, but that person was away, et cetera, et cetera. So I can maintain that and I, I keep that. And then for the um, name of the file, I put sport dad equals folder number. So whatever I have in the um, code replacement, it's going to put the name that name for that person. So what ends up happening is, pardon me, I never have to type a name. So, or I never have to create a, um, a subdirectory. The only subdirectory I created was 2019 Cobra Swim Club portraits. Then I go in here and do the um, ingest, point to the primary destination. And of course I use a um, secondary destination just in case I mess up something. Um, uh, you know, further to last week's discussion on backups. So oh. I ingest to two sources and, and then it immediately starts backing up to the cloud and I can, you know, this is just a, a basically a scratch drive um, that I hopefully never have to use. So it ingests what I then do at my workflow for this portrait shoot again, 200 plus was I created a form on my website and people would email me with the image number that they selected. So what I would do then is I would come up here, say, show me all the pictures from the entire shoot, select all, find, so find me picture number, I don't know, uh, 705. Let's see, hopefully I have a picture of seven, there it is. So I would yeah. just come here, say that's the one that mom and dad want, I would mark it. Um, so I would give it a, a star rating, for example. And then, as you can see here, I, I can now, what I then do it, you know, after a couple of weeks, um, when the parents have all had their time to, to choose, I can go in here and say, yeah, this one's got one picked, and I, this one's got one picked, this one's got one picked. I can then, after I've picked all of the, uh, the images, I come here, I say, um, so these are all the pictures from the entire shoot. Now show me, can I hide this? I'm just gonna, there we go. So now just show me the ones that are, that have ratings. So mm -hmm. I now take these, I drop them into Lightroom, maintaining the storage or the, maintaining the subfolder structure. So what ends up happening is I come in here into Lightroom. It's just gonna take a second okay. here. And then now you can see for the uh, Cobra portraits, um, you can see here, Anthony's got one picture, Kimberly's got one picture, Taylor's got mm -hmm. one picture. So I only have to deal with 259 images as opposed to the, you know, four or 5,000 that I, that I took during the day. So Lightroom is much faster. So these are the ones that I now uh, deal with in Lightroom. So these are all the final product pictures. Um, 
couple one of one thing I wanted to kind of jump back to just for a quick second was do you happen to have that code replacement file uh loaded at the moment or a code replacement file? I find that I mean I, I think code replacements to some people is is you know old, you know I don't want to say old hat but it's it's something that they've been doing for years and isn't anything new but uh, I do find that I'm that I'm telling people what code replacements are and and what you know how they work fairly frequently so I think it's it's a good idea to just have this you know have this up and see what you know what they actually do it doesn't have to be the um, the exact one for what you're you know for what you're doing but um, I, you know so I always just like kind of showing people what what that does so. Uh, well, here's the cool, code yeah. replacement. Here's the code replacement file for the Cobras one. Sure. So you can see I, I've grouped. You know, I've got 100. That's the team picture that I took, and then 101, mm -hmm. 102. So the 100 group. Mm -hmm. That's I don't know the the development gold team or the squad, and then the 200s. That's the you know gold competitive team. Blah blah blah. So I've you know, I've kind of bunched them together. So you can see there's, you know, 200, 300, 400. This stuff over here is just kind of superfluous data. Um, sure. So what I've got is 101 is Anthony C. 102 is Kimberly. Um, so you can see if I go here, this, oops, let me close this. This is Anthony and you can see sport dad underscore Anthony C underscore sequence number. Right. Actually, best Can practice you, is not to use an underscore. It should be a dash. I I, I use dashes now. Yeah. Uh, um, and and another thing you mentioned was the the character for um for uh, I think it's called delimiter character is what it's called. Yeah. Um, would you mind just yeah going up to the edit menu, going to settings, and and so uh and yeah set code replacement. So what what Jeff was talking about. Uh, Kind of at the start there was that delimiter character i think by default is uh one of the it's either a backslash or a forward slash i can't remember which one but um he said it to be the equal sign and I, that's something i've done as well uh, because so just again for people that are new to code replacements what what jeff is doing here is he's is he's typing in the he's typing equals he's typing the number that corresponds with the name in that code replacement file and then the equals character again and as soon as you do that in photo mechanic um you it, it'll do that it does that replacement immediately so the first column which we see is uh you know 100 101 102 etc uh when when you type equals and then that number in the first column you it gets replaced with with what's there right away so um again some people know that because they've been using it for years some people code replaces is a new thing so I, I think it's always good to give that extra bit of like how this this process actually works yeah um, so and that works for yeah go yeah ahead. The, the code replacement is, as you know, the first thing that I learned in using photo mechanic was about using it for captions. So mm -hmm. you would, you know, type equals, you know, T A four for, you know, Toronto mm -hmm. Argonauts number four. Right. And, um, right. for the captioning, but I started figuring, I tried to figure out how to use this on ingest. So I'm not mm -hmm. actually typing one Oh one, one Oh two. It's done as a variable. Here, I'll pull up the uh, the ingest window again. Here, close this. Um, file ingest. So you can see here that it's going into folder number, then equals folder number equals. So this right. piece right here is where it goes to the lookup, the, the code replacement file, and it replaces 101 with Anthony C and folder Ooh. number 102 with Kimberly. So thank, yeah, thank you. that part was the secret sauce. And, um, you know, as I used to shoot a swim meet on, say, a Saturday and Sunday and then spend all day Monday trying to figure out who was who because, you know, they're typically mm -hmm. wearing the same color cap. You can't shoot the clock because the clock isn't necessarily reset at the beginning of the race. And, you know, you're shooting at such high speed, you might actually not, you know, you might be in between cycles on the clock and get a black screen yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah it's just too many things to worry about so, mm -hmm. so here's the you know here's the example of the workflow so um create this sorry come back here create um this one uh text edit this one yeah uh, where did i do it did i close it I might have closed it this one so create this here i'll make it a little larger so create this um, uh, text replacement file, print it, tape it to the wall, 
line the kids up and as they're about to um, step up to me, um, uh, you know, they, they tell me their number and I've programmed a function key on my camera. Um, so I shoot with Nikon bodies and I programmed a function key. I literally hit a button and it brings up the storage folder menu. And so it takes about three, four seconds um, mm -hmm. of time to select the storage folder. Now, it's doable with other camera bodies, but it, there's a competitive advantage in Nikon that it does it across all their bodies. And you can, okay. you can specify which storage folder that you're shooting in. So I don't need to do it sequentially. Um, gotcha. What you'd have to do with other, uh, other camera bodies. Interesting. I hadn't, uh, that's something I hadn't noticed with, uh, I don't, I don't use that feature, but, uh, yes. It, no one does. <laughs> <laughs> well, no I was going to ask, that was one of the questions I kind of had in my mind for like, what am I going to, you know, ask Jeff about? And I was going to say, what do, what, do, what do you do with photo mechanic and your workflow that, that no one, you know, that you think no one else does and you might not, you might, right. You might not be, but, uh, but that's, well, you already answered the question. So I, I, if you got anything else, go for it. But uh, that's a good one because I haven't, I never really played around with adding new folders or anything. I just kind of, you know, fired, fired, fired shots off. So, so I'm seeing here a couple of questions come up and it said, uh, Mark is asking, am I correct in assuming the process wouldn't work in cameras that are not able to create folders on demand? To the best of my knowledge, every camera can create a folder on demand. Not necessarily one that you can, um, like I can't go folder number 307 and then 209 and then 904 but you can go sequentially i believe every camera because i've looked at this on canon nikon um sony and uh mick was telling me about his uh, fuji cameras mm -hmm. i'm just looking through my uh my canon camera right now uh and that i mean it's a 7d and, it's, and it does seem to have that ability so you know that's an old camera i think i, I yeah i mean I, I've couldn't, I don't have an exhaustive knowledge of, of every camera. So you, you probably have worked with yeah. more than I have. Um, so there's a question here Dean, from Dean Tate, how much time? Um, it takes me about three, four, as I said, three or four seconds to change the storage yeah. folder. So literally as the kid is, um, you know, as they walk to their mark, the, you know, there, there's a line that they're, they're standing behind. And as they go to the spot on the floor that they um, are, you know, to stand on, they're telling me that uh, what, what their number is. And if they don't, by the time they stand on their mark, they're sent to the back of the line. <laughs> right? You know, Dean's shooting 528 athletes, show off. Um, <laughs> three, three to, yeah. So 30 seconds I have with each. Like uh, Dean, like, what, like I said, it, it only takes a couple of seconds to change the uh, storage folder. All right. So does that make sense? I can show an example of um, um, uh, of actually putting it in place. Uh, do we want to go through yeah, and I, ask a couple of questions or answer a couple of questions? Yeah. What do you do? You, um, you can I actually I guess I don't have the page up, but um, okay. uh, if uh, let me. Yeah, let me look at those and um, uh, I, I do want to see it kind of start to finish. It's nice to to see it all in you know take place. Um, and while you're doing that, I'll I'll pull up that page and we'll have a. I'll... Uh, Mark, um, uh, I use my older D series for volume work. Doesn't seem like this would work. Um, Mark, I, I I'm not familiar with the D series, but um, as I said, believe every camera, every digital camera stores into a storage folder. Um, hi, Jeff. Did I see that correctly? Did you send the link of all the photos unedited? Um, is that a, a wait for them to choose? Yes. Um, so, uh, Manga is asking, so what I do after this shoot is I would, um, here, I, I'm in the, so I'm in the this folder. I've got all the pictures. So you can see that they're you know, literally thousands, and I would sort it by folder, all right? And then what I would do is I would select all of these and just pump the, the entire thing up to uh, my Smug Mug website, unedited, with big, huge watermarks on them. 
<laughs> and then each each image, as you can see, is numbered. So then there's a form on my website that the parent puts uh, their name um, and then their selection. And then obviously I've got an order form for, uh, you know, they can order additional prints and additional uh, digital images. Uh, the club the club pays for this shoot. If they want anything more than the one picture that they get, the, the parent pays for it. So that's all entirely automated. So uh, I only edit the ones that you can see here are colored like the, they've because that's the, the picture that the parents have selected. Uh, Sanjay, um, Sanjay sounds great. This is awesome. Thank you. This workflow is great for shooting one person at a time. Would this work if you're shooting a football or a baseball game? So in football or baseball, you're not going to, you know, store, have a folder for the quarterback and a, uh, for the running back and, and the cheerleaders, et cetera, and flip back and forth in the middle of uh, each play. I, like, I get that. Um, how I would use this workflow is I would have a, a storage folder for pregame, a storage folder for uh, the first quarter, second quarter, um, another one for uh, halftime, et cetera, et cetera. So as you can see here, I can look at all the pictures. Let's say this was a game. I can see all the pictures from all the quarters or innings. Um, but if I knew... You know, I had one great picture that was in the second quarter. I could just go to the second quarter folder and it would minimize the time. That would also help when you're captioning because you could say, you know, running back, you know, number 25, Bob Smith, blah, 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 in, you know, running play in, and then use the code replacement to say second quarter. So, you know, you're, you're automating that process. You don't have to look at the time and see when the play was. As much as you can automate, um, as you can take advantage of, it's going to save you time. And, um, I mean, I would say you can, you, you can still, I mean, people do use code replacements for their, you know, for shooting team sports as well. Like, you would just have, uh, obviously, you know, you're not doing headshots, but you would have... Uh, a roster that just basically covers the two teams. So if it was, yeah. uh, you know, New York Giants versus New York Jets, you would have NYG one, you know, one zero as the the code. Uh, and then, I, I mean, I guess it would be, I don't know if Eli Manning's still on the team, but you know, in that case, it would it would do a replacement with the you know the person that that has that number. Um, so and then you could even, I mean, if you did want to, I don't I don't know the use case for this, but if you did want to split it up into folders. You could actually, you could even do that. You could have the, if you had a field that had the, you know, the player name or the player position or whatever it might be yeah. uh, in your stationary, uh, not your stationary pad, your metadata info, you could, similar to how Jeff is creating folders with, um, you know, with with that code replacement, uh, well, co combination of code replacement variable, you could do the same thing with um, with your, a, a team sport you could have a code replacement um naming your your folders and copy your images into those folders so you could have a, a folder of, of every player if you wanted to and browse that way uh yeah. may, maybe not the maybe not the best way i'm just kind of going off the top of my head but um it's, it's certainly something that can be translated into that for sure yeah there you know there are lots of ways to um to take advantage of it but you know like here for example here's a code replacement file i did for uh so Dean shoots Dean Tate shoots a lot of hockey. Here was one I did for the uh, uh, my girls' hockey team. So the kid w would skate up to me, and she's wearing jersey number 28. I don't even need to ask her her number. Now, because mm -hmm. the folders go between 100 and 999, I just added 100. So folder 128 is, yeah, right? Folder one, you know, number 16 is Victoria. So literally, the, as the kid is skating up to her position, um, to have me photograph it, I see the jersey number, and I, I flip that into the camera, and um, and away we go. Yeah, and I think you're kind of showing a way that like photo mechanic, you can. I always say that people like that are asking me, and I think I said this, this two weeks ago, but people are always like, "Is this the right way to do it?" And like, I, there's never a, a yes answer to that. There's always just like, "Does it does it work?" Right? Um, and you know, in your case, you've you've said it so that the 100 i think you know on the other file um 100 was just the team name so if you needed to do a code replacement and or add a caption that had 
to use the team name, you you know in your mind that 100 is the team name, right? Um, yeah. So so that's your that's your workflow, and that that works great. Other you know someone else might want to say like you know their the first item in their code replacement is just CM or I don't know Cobra or CM or whatever the case may be. Um, and, and what I do there, typically so. at, a, at a swim meet is 100 is miscellaneous. So if I'm just mm -hmm. shooting people around the deck or shooting an official or something that the club might want to use, um, mm -hmm. I put it in the miscellaneous folders for the club to use uh, for social media. And then when I'm okay. shooting a specific athlete, I go to the um, and put, you know, in the camera, I put the, the specific folder and then that renames it to that person. So I'm going to have um, a miscellaneous uh, folder and then a, a Hans folder and a Ian folder if this was a swim meet, for example. Sure. Um, so Mark came back with a camera D series. We'll create a new folder every 10,000 images. Yep, that's what they do. So it's um, um, every, I think, 9,999 9 images. It'll create a new folder, but you should be able to create one on demand. Um, as I said, I, every, every camera that I've ever looked at, uh, you have that ability to do. Um, um Mark, I'm kind of curious cause you're saying D series and I mean, Canon and Nikon both use D in their, in their names. It, are you, I'm just not sure if you're referring to Canon or Nikon. Um, so if you want to shout that out in your, in your comment, that, uh, that would be, I'd be interested. Yeah. To another, another thing to be careful of with the Canon, um, if you're doing sequential, so, you know, you do one person and 100 and then 101 and 102, 103, et cetera. When you take the card out and go um, offload the, uh, the images and you put the card back into the computer, or sorry, back into the camera, Canon cameras, um, at least the ones that I've looked at, um, they reset back to folder 100. So I hired a photographer to shoot for me at one event, the one and only time I did that. And... Um, <laughs> He gave me 10 folders called 100. Um, so I'm like, what the heck am I going to do with that? And she said, well, they're all time stamped. You can figure it out. So my way of figuring <laughs> out was like, I paid her, then deleted all her images. <laughs> because they were just bad anyway. So, uh, uh, so um, other questions be serious. So then there's, uh, uh, hey, oh, James Gilbert from uh, Florida, my buddy from, uh, Sports Shooter Academy in uh, California. This is dope. That's uh, an inside joke. Um, adding the jersey number to the 100 is brilliant. Thanks, Dean. Not just a pretty face. Uh, I'll have to look into this folder idea. I shoot NASCAR on occasion. Often have a workflow for three series in a day. Practice qualifying. Yeah, so you know, you're shooting something like NASCAR or equestrian horse racing. I would have a folder for each individual race. So, um, you know, you know that the, you know, this folder is the first race, then this folder is the second race, et cetera, et cetera. Just so, you know, cause horses all look the same. Um, and you know, it's, it, it just makes it easier to sort that stuff out. Mm -hmm. Um, NASCAR. So Mark is saying, yeah, he's referring to the older Canon cameras. Again, I'm, I'm oh, a, okay. a long night con shooter. So. Uh, what I can do is um, I, I'm going to, if we have, t we have some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up, close this. I'm going to close this and I'm going to show you how I approach a shoot. So I'm going to open last week. I was supposed to be shooting the uh, Canadian Olympic swimming trials. Um, obviously that didn't happen, but um, so here's the code replacement file that I created. Um, so you can see here, here's 100 miscellaneous, 110 Penny Alexiak, Toronto Swim Club, Michael Phelps goggles, Kira Smith or is, is folder 150, Scarborough Swim Club, arena goggles, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see, see how I've done that. And these are separated by tabs. Um, so this is a, a text file. So, you know, I don't have the ability to make it look pretty like if it was a word file or an Excel spreadsheet, but, uh, so now what I'm going to do is, I'll, sorry, if I can uh, interject, you can, you, you could actually open this file as an Excel spreadsheet. And I often uh, will create uh, like it will, because it's, it's, oh, it's separated by tabs. Excel understands that and would actually just separate them into columns. So it, you, if you wanted to, and I've created, uh, you know, text files from Excel um, and, and create uh, 
use them as code replacements. Um, so you can certainly do that. So text a text editor, it does need to be a TXT file, but you can actually, you can create that in another application if you want actually, to. I'm going to so jump just in to throw that real quick. Um, a sure. couple months ago, I've been asking for this for a while. Um, Kirk, one of our developers, added in the fact that it will now accept a .tsv file as a valid code replacement file. So if you, there you go. if you want to use <laughs> Excel, uh, I use Google Sheets. You can create a code replacement file in Google Sheets, save it, download it as a TSV, and it's ready to rock and roll in, in Photo Mechanic right away. Thanks, Mick. That's I. Every time I'm on here, I learn something. Um, Anyway, so Jeff, you're, you're saying when when I when I have people uh, sign up. So if we look here, kind of at my process, if we go to my website, Sport Dad, we go here, swim page. Um, when people sign up, uh, it shouldn't be white. I this was a mistake. I made a mistake on changing a <laughs> template recently. Um, so they put in their, their information and Dean was asking a question, why goggles? So I was hired by Speedo and Arena Water Instinct for, um, uh, I was credentialed by Speedo. So Speedo was looking for pictures of their Olympic athletes. That's why I had goggles in there. Um, and how I got the job was I was posting pictures and tagging Speedo and, and, um, uh, Arena. So when I approached both companies, uh, they knew who I was by the time, uh, Anyway, um, That's great. That shows, so you know, when they fill out this form, when they fill out this form, I actually get a, a number that like I get the, the data come to me on uh, via email as well as into a report. But I get the email and there's a number and I use that number as the storage folder number so I can always refer back to it. Um, so I'm going to hide this. So here's the example. So let's say. I'm going to now, um, I'm going to take a few pictures. So let's say I'm going to go storage folder 150. I'm going to take a picture out my window. One, two, three pictures. That's Kylie Moss. Um, sorry, that was Kiara. So 151, um, that's uh, Yuri. So I'm going to take a picture of my fridge. Let's say four <laughs> pictures. And Kylie Moss, uh, so 170, okay. And I'm going to take a picture of the painting on my wall. One, two, three, four, five, six pictures. Okay. Now I take the card out of my computer, or sorry, out of my camera. So you can see I did um, Kiera, Yuri, and uh, um, Kylie because I wanted a couple of different clubs and a couple of different teams. So card goes into the computer, auto ingest, Boom. done. So now I'm going to come here, <laughs> Canadian swim. So I'm going to come here, look at all my, there are the pictures that I just took. So now you can see there's Kiara in a Kiara Smith folder. Um, Kira, 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 blah, blah, blah. So let's say I want this picture uh, from Kira, this picture of Kylie, and uh, Yuri, I want, let's say, this one. So I simply go here. There are the three that I want. Select the three, drop them into Lightroom. Uh, Something's funky with. Uh, oh, because... that happened to me yesterday. I think it might be the streaming thing. It takes Lightroom a second. Yeah. To get so I'm gonna. I'm. I'm um, just gonna quit. Um, quit Lightroom. While you're doing that, I'm gonna gonna answer this uh, question that just came up from Dean. Uh, he said, "Why are you skipping numbers 110?" Then that was. I think that was just to kind of uh, give an example of where uh, you know of of. Of, of using certain, you know, because he's not going to get each each competitor in order. Like he could have number one show up or number 110 show up and then 150 would come right after that. So it was just really just to give an example. It, it, they yeah. might come up in a row or they might not. For my workflow specifically, 100 is obviously miscellaneous. Penny Alexiak, I was going to shoot because she is the uh, first gold medalist born in the uh, 2000s. Of course, I'm going to take her pictures. The 150s, um, these are all arena athletes. 
Taylor Ruck, another uh, Olympian, um, former Olympian, uh, Rebecca Smith, another Olympian. I'm going to take their pictures, right? And then these are the Speedo athletes. And then also these are all the North York Aquatic Club athletes. These are all the uh, BTSC, the Barry Trojan Swim Club, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see I'm grouping them by club here. So that's why I'm skipping folders, right? I'm just, you know, kind of logically separating one, the 150s are the arena uh, athletes, et cetera, et cetera. Did that, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully that answers the Dean's question. Yeah, uh, why are you skipping numbers? Yeah, Nikon allows 100 to 99 as the folder numbers. Yeah, to uh, do. Uh, John Skinner, this concept is universal in its uses. Hockey folder, period one, period two, period three. Grand Prix racing, race one, two, three, four applies to any. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Evan, Jeff, what's your uh, best dad joke? Um, sorry, I didn't have time to think of one, uh, but but I did order a chicken and an egg on Amazon. I will let you know. <laughs> How's that, uh, Evan? Oh, Who's, man. Um, my uh, my young friend Evan is a big fan of dad jokes, so uh, he made me promise to have a dad joke for him. Um, so let's let's uh, so we've we've done those. Uh, so there are my three three pictures. I'm going to drop them into Lightroom, and let's hope it comes up and not get messed by the. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point it to the right destination over here. Yep. I'm going to use the uh, appropriate um, uh, develop preset. And then I'm going to say buy original folder. So you can see here are all the pictures that I took. But you can see one, two, three are selected. So boom, I go like this. Import. There are the three pictures. Um, so now you can see here there's one picture for Kiera, one picture for Yuri and one picture for Kylie, or sorry, yeah, Kylie Moss. So if I go here and look at all the pictures from the, uh, from the event, there's, there they go. So you can see 150, that's Kiara Smith, Yuri, et cetera, et cetera. So if I look at this picture, Sport Dad dash Yuri Kissel dash um, 06, uh, 006A is the sequence number. So like that part, as I said, in, for the figure skating, that took me three weeks to do when I shot a four day uh, swim thing. This was uh, six days of swimming. And as you can see, the time would have taken me zero to do all the na file naming. But now here's, here's I step, you know, one step further. Um, when I step, um, when I wanna now go to and put this up on my website, I've now got, you can see here, um, here's a Kiara Smith, and you saw I didn't do anything to add to that, like I didn't put it there. I've now got two images, um, whoops, cancel. I've got two images here for the arena athletes. There's Kiara, and uh, so all I need to do is watch this. I go boom, publish, I go to my website, swim, down here to 2000, go here. And uh, now we're seeing, if I go in here, you'll start to see the, um, that gets populated in here. It'll take a couple of minutes. Yeah, but sure. that's- uh, well, You see the name right there. <clears throat> yeah. So these, these were uh, created previously, again, through, um, you know, like creating the rules um, in advance that I did. But um, uh, there you go. So there's Kiera. So these are un unedited at this point, right? Sure. But, um, and then I come back. So that was the athletes. I now want to, um, uh, to, to do two companies. Um, go Speedo. This should be Kylie. Yeah. So there's a Kylie. So. I would give a link to the arena people and they would be able to go into and look at all the arena pictures. Um, uh, same with Speedo, et cetera, et cetera. And then I will also have folders for the individual clubs. 
Awesome. So that's part of, uh, so if I go back here, you can see I've created, you know, there's a miscellaneous pictures. We'll go there, officials by club. So now you see there's the Scarborough Swim Club. And how did I do that? That's the big question. All of that is done using the code replacements. So when I am doing, um, here, I'm gonna get rid of this, come back into here. Um, here's my uh, ITPC data uh, or template. And you can see here that what I've got is, uh, I, had to I had to find folder, or sorry, uh, fields that were um, searchable. And then um, what I did was I put folder number. So this is gonna be replaced with the athlete's name. And then down below, you can see I used the three fields, folder, uh, folder number, then folder number uh, variable three and folder number two. So if I come back here, you can see here's the variable one, variable two, variable three. So in these three fields, I would drop, in this case, Kylie Moss. Number three is Speedo. Number two is uh, University of Toronto. Boom, boom, boom. Never typed that other than the uh, code replacement file before the meet. Yeah, that's that a good, um, that's a great advanced, kind of more advanced code replacement file to, um, or code replacement concept to bring up is that that adding the pound two or pound three then looks at the the next columns in your um, uh, in your code replacement file. So um, I had never done times, that before up until yeah. this, uh, for the for the Olympic trials because I I only typically ever needed the athlete name, but in this case yeah. I needed the club as a variable and uh, the brand of goggle like that what brand uh, uh, that they wear. Um, sure. Because that's, you know, I'm shooting for clubs and individual athletes as well as uh, uh, the goggle manufacturers. Cool. So James Gilbert, um, so why use the equal sign as your delimiter? Um, so we touched on that very quickly. If you look here at ingest, so, you know, you look here, um, you know, users backslash Jeff Ogan backslash Dropbox backslash. If we were using the backslash here, um, as the uh, as the delimiting character, then you get a conflict between what Photo Mechanic is looking for in terms of a special character, and then what you're trying to do for um, your file system, which is the backslash. So I had to yeah, find, if you use a backslash, it won't work because it's, it's thinking it's a special character, not delimiting uh, for a folder. Right, you can make several levels of folders by typing into that folder name field. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the, the equal sign specifically is, is just Jeff's personal preference. Like that's, he, you know he decided on the equal sign as the delimiter yeah. you could uh i think use a number of different characters you could probably use a tilde or a plus sign or, or a number of different things but um just versus like the slash character that's certainly like using a slash in, in a folder naming scheme probably isn't the best way to do things <laughs> so yeah so there's a comment from danielle woods uh, amazing can use it for figure skating competition so i i figured this out because i was shooting figure skating as i said the first the first one took me three weeks to sort, and it was it was crazy. Um, I sh then wow. shot a number of competitions for Skate Canada and Skate Ontario, and some some events we'd have over a hundred thousand photos. Um, and my ingest and and rename and you know sorting and all of that time was zero. Um, you know, so that may, that means I can do a shoot. When, when I shot the uh, the Cobra Swim Club, I did a shoot for 200 plus. I didn't need an assistant. I set up the camera, set up the lights, taped the uh, thing to the wall, like taped the list to the wall, and then had a parent from the club or a coach from the club um, just tell the kids to, you know, look up your number and tell them your number as you step in front of them. Um, so, uh, you know, it's literally saving me, um, uh, it's saving me enough, to, you know, this sounds like a plug for uh, for photo mechanic, but um, it saves me enough <laughs> time each time I shoot, like if I shoot a swim, uh, swim meet, it used to take me all day Monday to sort the pictures and there were a lot of mistakes. Now it takes me zero time. So it literally pays for itself every shoot I do. 
but please don't raise the prices. <laughs> Jeff, can you share your templates? Sure. Yeah, I, I will do that. Um, is the metadata template applied during ingest? So yes, mm -hmm. um, because where is it here? Apply metadata, well, there you go. Um, that's your answer. Um, Danielle, apply metadata template in uh, to photos. So use, um, you know, I, I create, I have a number of different folders um, or metadata templates. So, you know, I can load and, and I have a photo mechanic folder. So here's all my IPTC and code replacement files go into one folder. So I know where to look. So if I'm shooting a figure skating thing uh, or golf, here's golf, boom. There you go. There's all the golf, Canadian men's senior championship, da 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 da. da. And then if I was to do an ingest now, um, it would um, add that metadata, that I, ITPC. Um, so before a shoot, I create the code replacement file and load up the uh, ITPC template, set my destinations here. And then when I get to the event, I take pictures, I put the card in the um, computer, boom. I'll, I'll, uh, so I never have to worry about. And here's another thing that is um, kind of neat, is the incremental ingest, and then unmount, never erase, but just unmount. So you put a card in the card reader, and then you know you pull it out, it, maybe it goes on the table, and then you think, uh-oh, did I already ingest that card? And you don't know, so you put it in again, and if you don't have this incremental, you're gonna ingest all those same files over again, and you're gonna have duplicates, and it's a pain, or you forget to unmount, and then you know you get the error. So I literally can put the card in, wait for the light to turn green, take it out, and it's, uh, it's good to go. Again, you can even you know, put a, working, working with, uh, with, with a bunch of people, um, you know, I never know, sometimes they forget it, you know, is this card ingested or not? I'll just throw it in the, the card reader. Um, I was gonna mention, I think you can set it up so that it will notify you actually with a, a notification up at the top right corner. I don't remember how to do that, uh, that the ingest is completed. I don't remember how to do well, that. Well, it's down here. So when it turns green, so I've got, right, uh, yeah. So close. So what I do is I make this nice and big, and then when it turns green, um, it, it's good to go. Right. Um, There's an option, metadata, we answered that one. Um, Danielle, uh, Dean, hi, Paul, this is what I'm thinking of when doing the multiple hockey games. Yeah, absolutely. You'd have different folders. Um, and then here's the important thing, uh, Dean, when you're doing that, um, sort by, folder not by time because you're gonna if you did it by uh, capture time you're gonna get um if there are two games going on at the same time you're gonna get a picture of game one and then game two and then game one and then game one and then game one and then game two um if you do it by folder you'll separate and then you'll be able to see them you know game period etc cetera, etc cetera. um can i can i add something to that that's gonna it might be helpful for users if they are looking at a contact sheet of, of multiple folders. Um, so Jeff, if you actually go into preferences on, um, on Photo Mechanic uh, and then go to the contact sheet preferences, um, you could, I mean, you have, I guess you have it right here where you have folder, folder num, but uh, you could actually in, in this label section put, you know, for label two, have that be just folder in curly brackets. So you have the variable for it. And then photo mechanic is going to show you the name of the folder that each image is in under its, its, its file uh, or under its thumbnail. So uh, if, if you are looking at, you know, 10 different file uh, folders in a single contact sheet, because you opened the, you know, opened up all the subfolders of a parent folder, uh, you can, can, at least get a visual while you're scrolling through like oh this full this files in uh you know this folder and and that i think makes things a little bit easier um so something I just want yeah, to which is, what, uh, yeah I've, what i've done here is i've gone in here and i've added um on the contact sheet it says file plus one label and then the one label mm -hmm. is the folder number so the mm -hmm. result is here here's the file name so sport dad dash kylie moss dash sequence number and then underneath is the folder number. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I, that's another another thing that I had to set here, and that's using code replacement. I never like I didn't create a, a one seventy Kylie Moss folder. Right. It's just that's it was done on the chest automatically. So what's really cool is if we look back here at um, you know when I did the Cobra Swim Club, there are two hundred and twenty folders. I never typed a single one. The only well, that's not true. I typed one. <laughs> that was. 2019 Cobra Swim Club portraits. I created that. Mm-hmm. Then I went to ingest, pointed at it here, um, and then put the card in the uh, card reader, and it automatically generated all of this. Awesome. Makes sense. Uh, Jeff, can you yeah. share templates? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, great. Oh, good. Good. Samuel, I'm glad you. Uh, Samuel, you got the, you got Samuel. Hey, he was my roommate down in uh, um, <laughs> in uh, California a couple of years ago um, when we were at Sports Shooter Academy. Awesome. Uh, cool. Well, um, I mean, I definitely learned something new. I hope uh, other folks did. Do you have any? Is your? Do you think you've covered what you wanted to cover, Jeff? Um, I did. I'm going to ask yeah. a favor. Um, All right. Go for- for those that uh, are not already in Insta, do, do, Sport Dad, Sport Dad CA, uh, please do me a favor and if you'd uh, like to keep in touch, um, please uh, give me a follow and uh, I follow back uh, uh, fellow photographers that, uh, uh, you know. anyway, so it's a good way to keep in touch. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely, um, you know, you're here to see how you do this and, uh, if folks have, Mick just did it, so follow his lead. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if anybody has questions about this stuff, uh, I'm we're we're always available. Uh, I, uh, you know, I can answer these questions. Jeff obviously likes answering these as well. So, um, you know, get get in touch if you have any anything else to, that you want to know about what we just did here. If you need some clarification, I'd be happy to go over it. Um, so yeah, um, Mick, you got anything you want to sign off with? No, I just wanted to thank everyone who for joining us and chatting in the, the, the live chat. That was fantastic. Jeff, you were amazing. Uh, like I said, this has changed my life. I'm using this technique when I shoot uh, music festivals. Uh, like I create a different folder for each band. Uh, I even I work it into the captions, so I have my captions all see, set up, my, my keywords set up. Um, it's been great. So, yeah, this is, Jeff is a wizard, a guru, a master, um, so sharp. Andrew, thanks a lot for, for facilitating this. Um, and yeah, yeah just let thank everyone you. Know we, uh, um, we currently have uh, just some housekeeping here. Camera Bits has uh, currently a sale going on on Photo Mechanic. Uh, our upgrades are now just $49 if you're coming from a past version of Photo Mechanic. Uh, we put a lot of work into Photo Mechanic 6. Uh, I know a lot of people are forced to upgrade to 6 because of Catalina. So uh, yeah, we dropped the price on upgrades for, for you folks. So if you if you've been waiting uh, to take take the plunge uh, now would be the time oh uh, and and to add back um this is the latest with uh, the uh, the latest version with uh, spotlight back in it thank you <laughs> thank yeah, you thank we, you we heard a lot about that and uh, thank you you know uh we we want to give people what they, what they're asking for so uh cool all right. Well, Jeff, I really appreciate it. And um, I think that was, I think a lot of people are going to get something good out of this. So I appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining. All right. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.